this video we're going to discuss some properties of integrals. Now don't worry if you feel that you don't yet understand what an integral is. It's normal for students to feel that way for a while because to understand integrals requires some time pondering them. So I want you to think of these properties as an opportunity to ponder the idea of an integral so that you'll understand it better rather than thinking of them as properties you have to write down and memorize. Now every integral in this video is going to be of the form integral from a to b of f of x dx. So let's take a moment and review the graphical picture of what an integral means. Here's a picture of a function y equals f of x and you can see that I have two rectangles positioned under the curve. If I add up the areas of those two rectangles then I get a Riemann sum and if I take the limit as the number of rectangles gets arbitrarily large, then I have an integral. So we can naively think of the integral as being the area under the curve, but we know that it's really a Riemann sum and that the terms in the Riemann sum can be negative or positive. We'll discuss this a little more in a minute. So we're going to use the integral from a to b of f of x dx to stand for any integral. Do you want the lower bound of integration to be 3, okay, so we fill in a 3 there. Do you want the upper bound to be 17? Okay, we fill in a 17 there. And what function do you want? Okay, you want x plus 2? We fill in x plus 2 over there. So, in other words, when we write this, the integral from a to b of f of x dx, we're representing every possible integral. Now here again is the, that picture of the function y equals f of x, and a picture of the shaded in region that represents the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And we can think of that blue region as being positive. But another function y equals f of x might have certain regions that represent a negative part of the Riemann sum. And still other possible uh, situations have the value of a on the opposite side. So a is to the right of b. If a is a greater number than b, then we're going backwards, and in that case the signs reverse, and anything that is below the x-axis represents a positive contribution, and anything above the x-axis represents a negative contribution. And this makes sense if you go back to thinking about the Riemann sum. Okay, it all comes down to the terms in the Riemann sum f of x times dx. The terms are actually of the form f of x times delta x, and then we take a limit as delta x goes to zero. And we're going to add up a bunch of those terms. So for example, if I wanted to add three of, th three of those terms, it would look like this, f of x1 times delta x plus f of x2 times delta x plus f of x3 times delta x, where x1, x2, and x3 are three values in between a and b, shown here. And the product of f of x times delta x gives me a rectangle. So f of x1 times delta x is that rectangle and then we have two more rectangles for this n equals 3 Riemann sum. And because each term has this form, f of x times delta x, if one of those numbers is negative, then the term itself will be negative. So that means if the function is negative, then the value will be negative. But there's another factor besides f of x, and that's delta x. Delta x is this distance here, or this distance here. We have equal spacing, so it makes no difference. Delta x is the width of the rectangle, but it's also the step size in going from x1 to x2, or x2 to x3. So if we're integrating from right to left, if we're integrating from a bigger number to a smaller number, that would make delta x become negative. So in the situation over here, for example, we have a negative value of delta x and a negative value of the function. And we have negative times negative equals positive, and that's why this gives a positive contribution to the Riemann sum and a positive contribution to the integral. So that was a quick review or reminder of how we define the integrals. Now let's explore the properties of integrals a little bit. Property number one. In this property, we're going to think about how the integral is bounded above and below based on the graphical picture of the integral. If that blue shaded region represents the value of the integral, notice that this rectangle here, the green rectangle I just drew, is smaller than 
the integral. It's a lower bound, and it's equal to the minimum value of the function on the subinterval multiplied by b minus a. That's just length times width. It's the area of a rectangle. So that's our lower bound for the integral. And then we have an upper bound that is the maximum value of the function on that interval times b minus a. And that is property 1. The second property of integrals has to do with the integral from a to b of k times f of x dx. Now here's a picture of f of x and here's a picture of k times f of x. It's a vertical dilation. And the idea is that the area of the blue shaded region that I've shown here is just going to be k times bigger than the area under f of x. That is, the integral of k f of x is k times the integral of f of x. Okay, the dark blue shaded region and the light blue shaded region each correspond to an integral. And the area of the light blue region can be seen because it's um, a vertical dilation of the dark blue area, and that means the area is just going to be multiplied by a factor of k. Property 3. The integral from a to b of f of x plus g of x dx. Well, you can probably guess that what that is. The integral of a sum of two functions is going to be the sum of the integrals. And we can see that with a different picture. Imagine that this is a graph of f of x and f of x plus g of x. Well, the individual terms of the Riemann sum are going to be rectangles. So if I draw these two rectangles there, a black one and a gray one, I can see that the black rectangle is going to be f of x multiplied by dx, whereas the gray rectangle will be g of x multiplied by dx. And because of the ability to distribute multiplication over addition, I see that f of x times delta x plus g of x times delta x is the same as f of x plus g of x times delta x. So when you take the limit and turn it into an integral, this property results. Property number four is that the integral from a to a of f of x dx is zero. I hope you can see why that is. The integral from a to a is the area of this zero width region. It has no width. Its area is zero. Property number five says that the integral from b to a of f of x dx is the opposite of the integral from a to b. If I reverse the a and the b, it's the same as multiplying by negative one. And that's simply because the sign of dx switches. Property number six says the integral from a to b of k times dx, where k is a constant, well, you could figure this one out yourself. Probably look at a graph of the curve y equals k and figure out what the integral from a to b would look like. It's just a rectangle, and its value is k times b minus a, and that's property 6. Property number 7 is about what happens when you add the integral from a to b of f of x plus the integral from b to c of f of x dx. And you can see in this diagram here that the first integral, the integral from a to b, corresponds to the red area, and the second integral from b to c corresponds to the blue area. If you add the red area plus the blue area, you get the same result as the green area here, integral from a to c of f of x dx. And the interesting thing about this particular property is that it works no matter what order a, b, and c are in. For example, if, if c is in between a and b, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx becomes the red plus the blue together. The integral from b to c of f of x dx now goes backwards, so it's equal to the negative of the blue region. And when you add the total region minus the blue region, then you're left with the integral from a to c, which is the red region. That is, the, the, the top integral is saying red plus blue equals green. The bottom integral is saying green minus blue equals red. And you can try it yourself for all the other different arrangements of a, b, and c, and you'll see it always works. It always holds true. And the last property of integrals has to do with integrals of functions that look like this. Even functions, where f of negative x is equal to f of x, and odd functions, where f of negative x is negative f of x. And you could see that from symmetry, if you integrate these functions from negative a to a, 
you can make a generalization about the values of those integrals. And those generalizations are, first, that the integral from negative a to a of an even function is twice the integral from 0 to a of that function, and that the integral from negative a to a of any odd function must be 0. So those are the eight properties of integrals I wanted to discuss today. And now I have a practice problem for you. Here's an integral that you should be able to compute just by knowing these properties of integrals, and also knowing a formula from geometry for the area of a circle. See if you can figure out the exact value of this integral.